Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Um, my name is Dave Demlo. I'm the Vice President of Product Strategy with Scale Computing. And uh, today we're going to cover uh, beyond the data center, uh, edge computing, understanding the critical role of hyperconverged infrastructure in the edge. Uh, we'll talk about what edge computing is, what some of the key requirements are, go through a number of use cases and examples, uh, look at some of the key requirements and, and drivers involved, uh, and then talk about the Scale Computing HC3 Edge product line uh, for edge computing. And we uh, can take questions during the session as well. So let's dive in. Uh, what is the edge? Uh, from our definition, uh, and it's, it's very broad, uh, it's really any time you're running mission critical applications and infrastructure for IT outside the four walls of the data center. So uh, some examples are as simple as, you know, your traditional remote, remote office uh, or branch office, uh, retail chain environments, retail stores, uh, energy, energy production, shipping, logistics, uh, manufacturing, often locations with multiple uh, you know, factory lines, multiple manufacturing locations, uh, will deploy edge computing uh, close to those machines and equipment and so forth. Uh, another way of looking at edge is kind of as that place where uh, IT meets uh, people, infrastructure, things, and exchanges information uh, between the physical and the digital world. Um, what's driving edge computing? Uh, well, uh, where it generally makes sense is, again, you know, outside the, uh, the centralized data center uh, for applications where you need to bring the compute and storage resources close to some location where they're needed, generally where the data is created, where analysis is done. Uh, often this requires a small uh, footprint to be able to support that. Um, a lot of the applications that you'll see are uh, doing things like collecting data, processing very large growing amounts of data from machines, from video cameras, doing some type of analysis, and often making very rapid decisions based on uh, that information in real time. Uh, sometimes you'll see edge computing where it is acting as a bridge between uh, that on-premises edge application, that infrastructure, and cloud operations or uh, centralized data center operations. There's often uh, different roles that, that can be shifted back and forth between those. Uh, but kind of the key is um, keeping uh, keeping the processing and the storage of that data uh, where it makes the most sense, where it's needed to uh, support a particular driver or application. Uh, so what's been driving this needs? Because edge is kind of the you know hot topic in, in the IT industry. Uh, really, first and foremost, it's data explosion. Uh, vast amounts of data being created by you know every kind of device, uh, new you know, you know video stream uh, data, machine analysis data, transactional data in retail organizations, uh, and just that explosion of data uh, being generated, collected, and often stored and retained in many locations uh, is just flooding the abilities of, of the network of, of centralized infrastructure in many cases. Um, another key driver is the dependence on that data. So the more it's created and you build business processes around using that, the resiliency of the application, having availability of that data to make those real-time decisions uh, becomes more and more mission critical. Uh, and not just whether it's you know binary, I can access it or not, but how rapidly, how quickly uh, you can make those uh, determinations that you can access that data. And for many of these kind of real-time applications, the latency of collecting data, sending it across any kind of a, a remote network, doing some remote processing, sending some data back, just that round trip latency of uh, delivering the data, of doing that compute, and then uh, acting on it is, is really too late uh, to meet the business requirements of you know something like, for example, uh, the classic edge example is a, a self-driving car. You can't gather all that sensor data, send it off somewhere to make some decisions, and send the answer back that says you need to stop immediately. There's you know an object 20 feet in front of you, um, and in, you know in the case of manufacturing where you're you know you're looking at uh, production lines and in many retail environments, there's similar kinds of latency uh, requirements that are there. Uh, another case that can just um, control where the data needs to live, how it needs to be stored, uh, are regulations on things like privacy, security, uh, data sovereigns within, uh, with, you know, within a country or within uh, sometimes uh, a business organization. Those type of things all lead towards keeping data at, at uh, more distributed edge locations uh, versus uh, large-scale centralization. 
So what kind of differences or where can that make uh, a difference? So, you know, there are many applications that, uh, as I mentioned, just require local or on-premises operation. Uh, they're running constantly. Uh, they can't fail back to a remote cloud for many of these uh, reasons that I just mentioned. Um, often it may just be one application that's, you know, critical uh, for the business. Uh, other times there's multiple. Um, but many times you just have other things that need to ride along or it starts to depend on, on that edge data. Uh, another place where edge computing is if you have kind of a centrally or regionally hubbed organization, so kind of a naturally distributed organization, um, you know, in which case you're probably already managing your infrastructure and operations from um, some centralized locations. You wouldn't necessarily in that model have uh, IT personnel on site or even be able to necessarily deploy them or get them uh, quickly to some of these locations or cost effectively. Um, and it's just kind of expected in that organization that these general central management and orchestration of applications and IT operations is going to be centrally managed versus uh, distributed out to those locations. Um, other cases where edge computing can make a big difference is if you just have uh, above average failure risk or frequency. And uh, often this is driven by poor environmental conditions, physical environments, um, you know, your not typical data center pristine conditions. Uh, we see this a lot in, you know, manufacturing locations, uh, in, uh, you know, harsh geographic environments. Uh, some of the case studies we'll talk about here include things like, um, you know, shipping vessels out at sea that have, uh, you know, very poor intermittent network connectivity. Uh, in many uh, countries, uh, you know, reliable uh, high-performance internet connections is, is far from a, a given. And uh, so having, you wouldn't want to have applications that would be dependent on, you know, uh, on that constant network access uh, for a, a critical type of function. Which kind of leads us to, you know, edge is not the same as the data center in, in many, many ways. And we'll go through some of them here, but you don't have that standardization, that, uh, uh, you know, well-controlled environment, the, uh, the access to IT people and processes and so forth. Uh, very often you have form factor limitations. Um, Deployment of the, the gear initially physically is often a, a much bigger challenge than a, a central data center. Uh, power consumption in particularly some of these environments uh, can be a, a critical thing. Noise of traditional IT equipment uh, often will not, you know, will not uh, uh, fit in, uh, you know, for example, a retail environment uh, where, you know, your typical enter enterprise class server uh, will be, you know, much too loud or noisy to, to operate in that environment. Uh, break fix is nowhere near the same, and this is really one of the areas I think a lot of people do uh, overlook uh, is, you know, uh, when it comes to evaluating the level of resiliency and the level of, you know, fault tolerance that you may want to build into edge infrastructure. Uh, and there's various degrees, but, uh, you know, deploying uh, IT personnel, deploying uh, spare parts, replacements um, in, you know, out to many of these remote edge locations. Uh, is very cost effective, having parts depots, you know, nearby that uh, can, uh, you know, quickly respond uh, with replacement parts, probably during a, a critical heated downtime event um, is a main, you know, con consideration that you would want to look at flexibility in the edge environment. Um, manageability, uh, you know, a lot of the data center kind of gear just was not, uh, was not designed to be managed outside of a, you know, clean, well-controlled data center environment um, and, um, you, you know, monitoring things, uh, uh, you know, across tens, <laughs> tens, hundreds or thousands of locations obviously presents, uh, you know, very different challenges than uh, in one centralized data center. Uh, application integration, uh, so making, you know, understanding the uh, needs of a particular application, uh, not oversizing uh, the environment uh, for a particular application, um, making the infrastructure in many cases application aware, particularly when you're looking at some of the newer kinds of applications such as container-based, Kubernetes-based applications that themselves have some level of application level resilience and, and need uh, an infrastructure that provides data resilience for them. Um, and then of course the application deployment uh, considerations, how do you initially distribute, how do you patch, how do you maintain, how do you roll out new applications across tens, hundreds, or thousands of locations. And, uh, you know, that, for example, uh, you know, you have to accommodate a wide variety of applications. Very few companies have the luxury 
of you know deploying a brand new greenfield container kubernetes based applications many have to deal with legacy applications uh, legacy operating systems you know older windows versions um, probably in a lot of cases deployed on a you know a mismatch of, of hardware infrastructure in some cases bare metal uh, so considering all those uh, and those needs and, and uh, potential changes and benefits from your edge deployment um, are definitely things to, to look at for each uh, of your environments. So some case studies here that will highlight some of those needs and kind of bring us towards, um, you know, some of the requirements in general at the edge. Uh, so one of the areas we see uh, a lot of edge type deployments is in various healthcare use cases. So regional medical offices, smaller offices, you know, many organizations, for example, um, you know, might have, you know, 10 to 20 or 100 sites in, in that vicinity. Today, most of them are probably depending on a, a single server, a, a, you know, a branch office box, uh, maybe with some level of centralized management. Um, generally, there's a small footprint available for IT in these. These are kind of, you know, practice uh, management oriented applications in some cases, uh, you know, uh, working with some devices, x-ray machines, things like that, gathering data. So a lot of the kind of back office stuff has already moved to the, you know, to the centralized cloud, email office, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, but there are these key applications that generally, as I mentioned, are, you know, uh, need to be operable at all times, whether or not there's internet connectivity, often need to interface with local devices uh, that, you know, still need to be on prem and are really critical to uh, operating those businesses. Uh, so as these things, you know, proliferate, the cost and complexity of managing growing number of sites is a challenge that needs to be addressed. The cost of rolling trucks out to these locations and the impact of downtime when something fails uh, is very uh, costly, sending out, you know, replacement parts and IT resources. And of course, you know, in a, something like, you know, this example is uh, based on the dental office, you know, there would be no IT re uh, remote resources available there to do anything. So everything uh, any issue would need to be taken care of remotely in, in kind of the status quo environment. Uh, you know, in another case, uh, a retailer, um, and we kind of split this up into some different, you know, sizes. Let's say a medium-sized retailer, maybe, you know, 50 to, you know, a couple hundred sites. Uh, there you might have a couple of servers today in each location, more likely to have some level of centralized management in this little larger organization. There you may be running just a few key applications, you know, point of sale to keep uh, the, the tills going, uh, you know, loyalty applications that customers depend on. Increasingly, we see uh, video surveillance and physical security, access control, and so forth uh, uh, being deployed uh, on uh, centralized IT infrastructure. Um, may have more applications that, that you're planning or, or want to add and be able to uh, expand down the line and not get locked in. There certainly are already dealing with cost and complexity uh, based on you know all the existing servers, applications, and sites, um, and then looking for better management and centralized orchestration and automation. So the ability to centrally push out um, new policies, new applications, and monitor those all across multiple locations from a, a single place. And an example of this is one of our customers, uh, Jerry's Foods, uh, where we have an extensive case study. Uh, available on site. They often in many markets go under the branding Cub Foods, but uh, a variety of uh, retail establishments and, and are running their, their business on HC3 Edge. Uh, kind of a larger uh, example use case, and, and this is also a uh, another case study customer of ours, uh, Del Hayes, um, an international uh, grocery chain retailer. Uh, we are working with them extensively uh, in Europe and Belgium and, and several other countries. Large national retailer have a wide variety of stores from kind of your traditional grocery store down to quick serve and convenience stores. Uh, over 500 sites uh, deployed and many more in the planning. Uh, they have a range of infrastructure that they have to manage and some uh, smaller affiliate stores There might be a single server or even desktop type class machines. Uh, in other branches, they started off with multiple um, uh, servers running different applications and some of the things that you know are involved here would be point of sale loyalty inventory security you know as i mentioned video surveillance and so forth um, in some cases there might be pieces integration graded with cloud um, you know some of the centralized analytics uh, uh, archiving for example of um, you know data that needs to be retained uh, may be leveraged in the cloud at this kind of scale, you may get into a DevOps team uh, that 
uh, is involved in solution planning and testing and designing, uh, and basically rolling out uh, the infrastructure across multiple edge locations um, using automation. And automation here really becomes very, very critical when you get into these large number of, of sites, uh, automating deployment, automating updates, automating uh, monitoring and, and so forth. Um, so here, things that become important, which we'll talk a little, little, little bit more about, are things like zero touch configuration. So being able to rapidly deploy stores, have them pre-configured with uh, the environmental information that they need for a particular location, with the application profiles that they need, and having using that automation to push those out um, automatically without you know a, a human clicking through a, a lot of buttons at, at each of these locations. Another edge computing use case that we actually have several customers uh, on as well uh, kind of fall into I call these extreme edge, but you know logistics, uh, logistics and transport um, in uh, ocean going <laughs> vessels. We also have a customer uh, with a case study that uh, builds uh, offshore oil platforms and has a fleet of ships uh, that are responsible for doing that moving around. Uh, but these have some very unique edge requirements, uh, you know, a, a various size fleet. Um, you know, maybe as few as, you know, 50 or 100, up to several hundred. Uh, they have onboard IT infrastructure, obviously no IT staff on board. Uh, generally, these can be fairly lightweight type applications, but um, here really autonomous operation, which we'll talk a little bit more about, is really vital. And that means, you know, having infrastructure that's smart enough to detect an anomaly, detect a failure of a particular, you know, hardware component, uh, and compute around it, you know, keep the applications running, fail over, take recovery steps automatically without uh, without an IT operator having to do anything or even having to communicate back to any kind of central brain uh, to make that decision. Because you may be, you know, at, at a patch of the ocean where even satellite communications is, is sparse and limited, uh, having a system that's smart enough to take those kind of autonomous recovery steps is very, very critical in this environment. Um, as are, um, you know, building in fault tolerance. So um, in these kinds of environments, uh, you may actually design, you know, if, if this ship is out at sea for months and, um, you know, you've got you know, mission critical infrastructure running there, you may have, you may design in additional fault tolerance uh, to uh, address, you know, multiple hard drive failures that you expect or multiple, you know, server node failures uh, over the course of several months. Uh, without having to deploy new replacement hardware, uh, you know, just build in enough resilience in that kind of environment um, until, you know, so you can operate without having to, you know, put somebody on a helicopter and fly parts out to uh, a ship in a, in a case like that. Uh, so that would be a, you know, fairly extreme kind of edge, you know, environment, but, um, you know, there's all ranges of, of applications, of needs uh, in between. And, uh, and our goal is really to provide uh, that full range of solution. We'll go through some of our, our options. So, uh, you know, kind of summarizing those, um, you know, the requirements at the edge, first of all, the, you know, the edge must autonomously keep applications up and running. That's, that's the first and foremost goal. So uh, providing high availability automatically without any IT administrator intervention uh, or necessarily even network access, uh, you know, as I mentioned. So uh, you want the system to be able to monitor itself, self-heal, uh, detect errors, correct errors, keep the data intact, keep the applications up and running. Um, you want a software stack that is flexible to run on a mix of traditional uh, server platforms where those are appropriate and uh, lightweight edge, pl pr edge platforms where those are appropriate, uh, as well as in many environments, uh, you know, ruggedized type of gear and, and so forth. So hardware flexibility and, and efficient software is really key. Uh, you want something that can run all your infrastructure. So uh, traditional VMs, you know, legacy applications to containers, Kubernetes, IoT gateways, all of that on the same high availability infrastructure side by side, really to minimize complexity and, and the number of things to, to manage. Um, and obviously in this kind of environment, most, uh, most of not many of, of these edge use cases we see um, are 24 by seven by 365. So uh, even scheduled downtime, scheduled disruptions are uh, you know, very, very costly. Uh, so a system that can uh, upgrade itself uh, as needed, you know, security patches and so forth, without requiring downtime, 
uh, is also generally a, a requirement in, in many of these edge environments. And so that's something that our clustered HC3 edge uh, implementations provide inherently the ability to roll, do a rolling upgrade non-disruptively across an entire cluster, leveraging live migrations, moving workloads around, and so forth. So uh, an overview of the HC3 Edge product um, in the, how we address that. Number one, our, our goal from day one has always been on simplicity. So uh, not only the simplicity you get from the hyper-converged integration of pre-configuring the storage, putting all the compute and everything uh, into the single platform, uh, providing that unified management, flat, fast deployment, automated deployment uh, in, in the Edge type of configuration, that zero touch configuration that I mentioned, maintaining high availability so the system you know that is self-healing uh, has integrated backup and replication capabilities uh, where those are desired uh, so you know snapshot scheduling uh, interfaces for third-party backups remote replication uh, as well as disaster recovery as a service offering uh, for centralizing dr where where that's applicable in these edge environments scalability uh, is often a key thing we see uh, uh, as a requirement so we do provide configurations uh, anything from a from even a single node um, where obviously you're not getting the full clustered um, redundancy on the compute standpoint but you, you can still get uh, data level storage redundancy and there's a, there's a class of edge-based applications that I kind of generally refer to as a caching application uh, so it you know not, not necessarily mission critical it can uh, you know, temporarily operate in a slower fashion where you fail back to the cloud. Those can be perf perfectly applicable on a, a single node configuration, but generally in the edge, as mentioned, we're talking about these autonomous, highly available clusters where uh, seamless scale out, uh, the ability to add resources as you need, whether that's, you know, both compute and storage, whether that's just storage, we have options to uh, you know, flexibly scale out with the, the resources that you need along that line is the ability to mix and match. Uh, so we do want to give customers the option to take infrastructure that they may acquire this year and next year or the year after mix and match and add, you know, what's then the latest, greatest, cheapest node that meets their requirement to their existing infrastructure and, and not have to worry about a, a series of uh, forklift upgrades over and over and over to basically be able to evolve their edge infrastructure, adding newer, better, faster nodes in uh, without having to immediately just remove and replace all, all the older ones. Uh, so that mix and match capability is pretty key. Uh, affordability is important to everyone, but uh, particularly when you, you know, start multiplying costs, whether they're OpEx, CapEx, um, external licensing, whatever, uh, across a thousand or 10,000 locations. So um, all the software is included with HC3 Edge. It's the, it's the complete infrastructure stack. There's no separate hypervisor to license. Um, it's generally delivered as an appliance format, so it's preloaded. Um, there's you know, certain cases where that would not, uh, where it could be delivered as software only, but the, the key is it's a very affordable, complete solution. One vendor minimizes complexity and, and generally much lower cost than trying to piecemeal um, a bunch of disparate parts together. And then in the edge environment, what becomes really critical is that centralized control piece. So the ability to centrally monitor multiple sites, to uh, deploy uh, uh, new applications, set policies on existing applications, upgrade existing applications and operating systems, and obviously keep the infrastructure, the HC3 Edge infrastructure itself, uh, upgraded and, and patched with all the, the latest, greatest security fixes and so forth. So, you know, again, Edge is being driven by rapidly evolving IT. Um, you know, as the infrastructure evolves in these Edge environments, uh, be, you know, because of the, the need for autonomous operation, the lack of IT, the cost of rolling trucks and equipment and people out to maintain these, you know, many locations, uh, complexity really is the, the key thing that you're looking to simplify in all ways, because complexity translates into costs directly. So, you know, it's obvious when you're dealing with, you know, multiple vendors, multiple support, support contracts, multiple certifications and HCLs, uh, you know, slower integration of, you know, new updates and patches and testing everything together, a lot more expertise uh, needed in, in that uh, environment, um, harder if not impossible to scale in, in certain cases. Uh, the cost of all the software licensing, you know, purchasing separate uh, hypervisor, SAN management, third-party infrastructure, or third-party backup and DR, 
uh, all adds up to both complexity and, and ultimately cost. So the HC3 Edge solution is designed to be you know, efficient, affordable, very, very easy to use, um, and gives you, you know, the benefit of single vendor support on all those pieces, no time to integrate. You know, these are appliances that, uh, you know, come out of the box, get, you know, IP clustered together and applications deployed. Uh, no infrastructure expertise is, is needed. Uh, and that's been interesting in, in a number of different verticals where, um, you know, even necessarily centrally, um, you, wouldn't you wouldn't have the same kind of, uh, uh, you know, domain expertise in storage and virtualization as, as uh, a lot of the uh, you know, more traditional IP-based businesses would have. Uh, the ability to scale seamlessly, as we mentioned, and all the software included that you need, uh, including capabilities for backup and, and DR out of the box. Um, so, you know, on the topic of hyperconvergence and different ways to orchestrate and, and architect hyperconvergence, uh, on the left is um, uh, a model that's based on uh, virtual storage appliances where, uh, you know, it's very, very similar to, you know, building your own 321 virtualization cluster uh, with a, a SAN or NAS external storage, uh, except in this case, the storage layer runs as a workload. It runs as a, a very heavy workload, a virtual machine on the storage cluster itself. And it's that piece that accesses the physical storage from each, um, each server or node in this case, pulls it together, so forth. Um, the issue, particularly in the edge environment, is those virtual storage appliances, sometimes they're called controller VMs, like a storage controller, uh, is, you know, A, the complexity. I mean, these, you're now integrating different vendors. This is probably a, you know, VMware hypervisor in a lot of cases, or a, a, at least a separately managed uh, piece of hypervisor, uh, is all the resources that are required. And, and as stated here, with this kind of an architecture, uh, you're, it's very common for this virtual storage appliance to take um, you know, 60 gig of RAM up to 100 gig of RAM, many virtual cores, a lot of CPU cycles to run this separate storage workload just to provide that shared storage pool uh, across to the entire cluster. Uh, with HC3 Edge, uh, we have an integrated hypervisor model. So every node um, inherently uh, shares its storage, provides access out to that uh, scalable pool. Uh, and it's all, you know, one single operating system that runs the VMs, that accesses the storage, that pools the storage, that provides the management capability. And so I'll show you here kind of some details, you know, from a operating system standpoint, um, you know, it's very, very typical. Uh, this would be even a fairly optimized type of system here to take a box with 64 gig of RAM, tune the uh, other operating system platform and virtual storage apply it down to maybe as little as 24 gig and, and very often it would be much more, you know, that would leave on that particular box uh, 40 gigabytes or less of RAM, uh, not to mention the, you know, additional complexity in the IO path, the additional performance hit of, you know, all that um, uh, IO path and networking path for the, uh, you know, the virtual storage appliance uh, and then you know, with this type of system, it's again, essentially a external software SAN, additional features that you may want to implement, just ratchet up the amount of RAM, the amount of CPU, the amount of overhead of those storage uh, services. So, you know, with scale, um, you know, the comparison, if you look at kind of the workloads that you would run, uh, we're able to fine tune our operating system, our storage stack in virtually all cases to four gigabytes or less. That's the amount that we reserve out of the box. Um, and, you know, so you can see that enables us to run and run real workloads and significant workloads on very small, very inexpensive uh, platforms. So we currently productize and ship systems uh, down to 16 gigabytes of RAM in our HE150 line. And after removing, you know, the four gigabytes for our operating system, storage stack, management functionality, and so forth, that would still, you know, remain, you know, give plenty of room for, you know, two uh, you know, decent sized VMs and then in a clustered environment, you know, so take two or three or four of these together, um, you know, that's a very cost effective way to build out a scalable, resilient edge data center uh, and in, invest your, your money and resources on hardware to run your applications as opposed, as opposed to hardware to run your infrastructure. 
So as we mentioned earlier, uh, AC3 is really designed to be that future ready infrastructure. You can scale out. So it'll, today it'll run, you know, all the applications and workloads that uh, that you have today, whether they're virtual machines, whether they're containers or Kubernetes applications, you know, and, and often what we see in these edge locations are things, you know, point of sale and retail, IoT, uh, in a wide variety of environments such as manufacturing, customer loyalty and, and retail, video surveillance and, and security kind of across you know, all the uh, industries, um, you know, inventory tracking, digital signage, you know, all things that you may run today, as well as, you know, providing an application uh, platform to down the line be able to add, you know, additional workloads, additional customer experience type things in a retail environment, analytics and, and so forth, and not have to, you know, throw this away or, or start over. So a little bit about our product line, um, you know, we focused a lot on edge, you know, being those things outside the primary data center, but we do offer a, you know, full range of solutions all the way from edge in various form factor to centralized data center core, and then also cloud uh, solutions as well that all integrate together. Um, and I'll go through kind of some of the ones that, that probably pertain uh, the most here. So, you know, kind of on the edge and micro edge uh, deployments, uh, these are the smallest, you know, form factor, the smallest endpoints for hyperconverged platforms. Uh, they're, you know, great for on-premises, mission critical applications. You know, generally, um, you know, in, in a cluster environments, they could be as few as a single workload. You know, it's particularly in one of those uh, kind of edge cache applications that I mentioned to, you know, 10 or 20 uh, workloads, depending on the needs. Um, you know, in terms of performance, these are NVMe-based storage, uh, fairly high clock speed CPUs that are available in here. So uh, they look small, they look cute, but uh, you can run a lot of very, very serious work. We've actually profiled, uh, you know, things you wouldn't expect necessarily, like uh, virtual desktop infrastructure, you know, for 20 users, 25 users running on a cluster of uh, these HE150 devices. Um, you know, we've run database applications, you know, HammerDB, TPCC, benchmarks and, and they perform, you know, very well for their, their cost point, uh, as well as, you know, all the typical edge applications you'd expect, you know, uh, Kubernetes clusters, video surveillance, so forth. Um, and they can scale out and, and so forth as your needs grow. Um, the HE500 is, you know, kind of the step up from that uh, in either a, you know, tower configuration or the, you know, more typical one new uh, rack mount form factor. And these are short depth nodes, so they can, you know, very easily fit in kind of a 6U telco grade type cabinet, all secured. Uh, and this is often what we do see in, in some larger retail environments is, you know, they'll deploy these pre-cabled, pre-configured, you know, three nodes, a switch, UPS power, you know, uninterruptible power supply, a pre-rack, um, you know, plug them in on on prem and then you know hoist them up to the the ceiling out of the way and and um, hope to uh, never have to touch them again and um, so those are you know kind of in the edge platforms uh, I covered these and I guess yeah on, on the capacity standpoint here you get into you know broader configurations available higher amount of RAM CPUs higher storage capacities um, so uh, you know depending on, on what you need there you've got those options um, and again, kind of covering that, you know, scale has deployment options really across the, you know, the whole infrastructure. We covered, you know, kind of starting on the right, these micro data centers, nano data centers on the small side. Um, you know, there are other, you know, we didn't say edge is always small. So in many of these, you know, these are, uh, you know, these should be very high capacity edge locations. If this is a, you know, a higher, uh, higher end, you know, video surveillance type system with hundreds of cameras, you know, long uh, retention, these are going to, you know, be a, a rack of, of serious high capacity uh, nodes or high compute nodes, um, you know, but the key being that they're easily deployed, centrally managed, uh, the applications are, are easy to deploy, um, you know, the same infrastructure systems can be, you know, stacked very deep and clustered heavily in a central data center, as we show here. And where you often see that is where you do want to leverage the built-in data protection, data replication capabilities, um, you know, to allow all of these edge locations to replicate some of their data, some of their critical workloads back to the central data center, uh, or even in some cases, vice versa. Um, you can actually use the replication as a method to push out those applications uh, in a reverse direction. Um, you know, lots of different flexibility there. 
And then in the case of DR, you know, we have, uh, you know, clusters uh, and individual nodes that are uh, really architected towards those higher capacity, lower performance from a compute standpoint needs uh, where you would you know, use them for backup modes or offsite disaster recovery uh, with just enough uh, performance as needed to, uh, you know, in the event of a critical disaster, spin up the, um, uh, you know, the critical VMs. Uh, and then not, not shown here is we also do have our own um, cloud DR as a service offering, uh, as well as a number of our partners uh, offer uh, DR as a service using you know, their own uh, hosted cloud or, or in some cases, uh, public cloud resources. So on the deployment, uh, and this is kind of a you know, preview of, of some stuff that's available to some large customers. Uh, we have an infrastructure called uh, Edge Portal uh, is, is how we refer to it. And this is really the piece that orchestrates uh, the deployment of uh, multiple HC3 systems, app applications, and kind of the workflow that you can uh, picture here for uh, a large edge multi-site deployment uh, would be, you know, you'd populate this, you know, central repository, the central edge portal with all the information about your sites, what applications, their network infrastructure, um, uh, you know, contacts, shipping information, things like that. You can then use this, in, you know, this system to basically scan out or order, place order for the actual servers uh, to be deployed, uh, enter their serial numbers, their MAC addresses, so forth, uh, so that when they show up, they phone home, they connect back to this edge portal infrastructure, get all their instructions to configure themselves, uh, be centrally monitored and managed, uh, to pre-stage and, and actually deploy and configure uh, the preset applications uh, that are set for that particular site. Uh, and for there, we use orchestration infrastructure um, uh, called Ansible, uh, which is an open source uh, automation platform. Uh, but you know, this centralized system is designed to allow you to uh, not only have visibility to everything across the infrastructure, but uh, to orchestrate infrastructure level tasks, configuration, staging, application level tasks, updates, things like that. Um, uh, track the execution of, of those uh, orchestration events, those what we call playbooks, uh, and provide that all in one place. But to, but to be able to operate across any of the HC3 Edge infrastructure, regardless of the, the size, whether it's a full-blown cluster, a nano cluster, a single node, whatever, all can be orchestrated um, through this Edge portal using the same kinds of, of capabilities. And another key thing that's critical um, in Edge or, or really any data center environment is, is a support. And so we package in our scale care support uh, with uh, all of our software subscription uh, it's world-class support or net promoter score, if you're familiar with that, uh, is, is very high by all industry standards. Um, and so that's available. Um, we, we have integrated into the cluster. Uh, not only does it have the ability to phone home to the central portal, you can enable phone home remote access capability for individual edge sites back to the scale support desk or scale engineers when it's necessary um, so that they can provide, you know, get direct access to uh, those configurations where, where that's allowed, get, you know, deeper uh, access to logs and metrics and, and apply changes and things like that. Uh, we also do offer a number of remote services that can be delivered to help assist with, you know, this premium installation, configure the networking, migrate or package up existing workloads that, that you may want to deploy on these edge infrastructure, um, set up things like disaster recovery planning, remote DR, uh, and that the you know the support and services access are available seven by twenty four by three sixty five around the globe. So to kind of summarize HC three Edge, uh, really the goal is you know simplifying this edge and infrastructure wide orchestration and management. Uh, so we provide that easy to use, informative web based management uh, you know from anywhere. Uh, you know really the the key here is this autonomous self healing infrastructure. Uh, you know, the fact that these, you know, this system has been well hardened for many, many years in the field and, you know, thousands of locations to uh, keep your applications up and running on its own. Um, and, uh, you know, in these remote edge locations, that's really what, what you want is to know that, um, you know, you don't need to check every day. You're going to, you know, uh, the system itself is going to monitor, uh, detect errors, correct errors, keep the applications up and running, tell you what you need to do, you know, in terms of care and feeding. It's like, 
all right, this node is down. Next time you do, you know, are you know, planning to roll a truck, deploy a service tech out to location 52, have them bring a spare hard drive to replace, um, you know, that kind of mode versus everything being a, uh, a fire drill. Uh, the zero touch deployment options, both for infrastructure and applications, uh, are essential here. Uh, one click upgrades with zero downtime. And those, by the way, are, can be, are tasks that are pushed and can be orchestrated from the central management. Uh, we do also provide uh, a, a very flexible, complete REST API. Um, so for advanced orchestration, uh, beyond necessarily what we provide, you know, out of the box, um, there is the ability to, you know, essentially anything that can be done within the HC3 system at the site level can be, uh, can be scripted, coded through the, uh, the REST API access. Uh, so that's an important capability to have. We leverage it in a lot of our own management capabilities, but it is available and out there for, uh, for more advanced cases where, um, uh, you know, you need to maybe automate a, a special, uh, you know, a particular step that's unique, uh, outside the norm. Um, you know, the REST API can be used to orchestrate that. Uh, and then as we discussed, the, uh, the edge portal for managing very, very large deployments. To kind of sum it up, you know, HC3 uh, and HC3 Edge is trusted by a lot of big names that, that you know and see. Um, you know, everybody has their obligatory logo slide here. Um, customers that are using the system, we are rated high, uh, very highly. We have actually the highest rated HCI solutions uh, across Gartner, Trust Radius, Spiceworks. So a pretty wide range of, of users with a lot of experience. Uh, there's over 700, you know, case studies published and 500 online reviews. Um, so there's certainly somebody in your industry and in your vertical uh, in your kind of use case that that's probably already using the HC3 system. And just a little, you know, background on, on kind of where we're at. Um, uh, you know, we're headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is where I'm based out of our uh, R&D group is all out of San Francisco. Uh, we have offices really across the globe, uh, our MIA headquarters. Uh, is in the Netherlands and, and serves uh, most of EMEA and uh, uh, areas there. Uh, over 5,000 customers, 20,000 systems have been deployed, and uh, a wide range of partners to help bring uh, you know these solutions to um, to market as needed. And with that, um, I will check quick to see if we did have any questions. Uh, no questions. Uh, I see there's no questions on here, so uh, we're available. My uh, Twitter account is up here. Uh, you know, feel free to uh, contact Scale. We offer a uh, uh, online web-based demos that you can sign up for and, and uh, see, uh, you know, walk through, drive you know, the user interface yourself that's available. We encourage you to do that. And with that, we'd like to thank you all for your time.